Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd out here in Junction City, Oregon with my friends Kyle and Corey. Uh, Corey obviously just flew in from Fashion Week in Paris. Uh, they're going to help us demonstrate some things today on this big sucker, the 370 Front Bath uh, Alliance Paradigm. This is a, uh, what, what they did here in the upper deck, I really like, because you've seen this living room before. Like, this is kind of the same living room as the 310, and everybody and their brother builds an opposing slide living room, uh, you know, with all the windows on the door side. That's great. But by basically including a full super slide, a fourth slide upstairs, they have opened this thing up like crazy, where if you're going to be in it, that, that full-time exchange, it's that extra space, that extra comfort room where if there's two of you getting up in the morning, you, you don't have to do the travel trailer shuffle to get around one another. You actually have room in your own private bedroom to put on a pair of pants. It is wild how many RVs don't provide things like that. Now, the cool thing about Alliance is before they even built their first RV, they were founded on just tons of consumer feedback. They went to owners rallies, people who had all kinds of different big fifth wheels. And people said, we want bigger, heavier, dutier, uh, <laughs> dutier, <laughs> more reliable running gear. Um, we don't want carpet. We don't want floor vents. Uh, we want big refrigerators, big storage, solid construction. That's the kind of stuff you're gonna get in this. And then they wrapped it all up in this big wide body package. And this is one of their larger models right here. Uh, it, there's, it, it has, like I said, excellent running gear. If you're gonna be towing and going, there's nothing that says you can't do that. But man, if you're gonna be parked at, a, at one spot for a long time, the space you get on this one's gonna be great. Now there's a couple little hiccups on it. Like there's a, a little note I have with the entertainment center, something I'd personally like to see change. And that's what I'd like to hear from you guys. We got Corey and Kyle helping us out. Maybe they can chime in too, but let me know where you think they nailed it, where you think they failed it, what they're killing and what they could do a little bit better as we go. Now there's a couple reasons this feels absolutely massive inside. The, the first of which is just the fact that it actually is absolutely massive. Secondly though, this is a 101 inch wide body, which is just about as big as you can make something without needing a wide load sign behind it like my Uncle Gary. Uh, the other thing here is we have extra tall slides with maximized atrium windows in this thing. Uh, I mean, look at the coverage here where you get to look at your campsite and apparently a splatter of bird poop on the window. That was uh, kind of nice. By the way, um, when you're at sea, some sailors will say that if a, a bird poops on you, that's supposed to be good luck. I'm pretty sure that's something that they told the new guy one time so that he wouldn't feel bad about having a bird poop on him. Another thing that's making this RV feel great, not to change the subject or anything, is the fact that the, the main deck flooring and the slide flooring are absolutely identical. And there's no big hard trim line. Like, it, it, it looks, for the most part, very visually seamless, which to me always makes everything look and feel a little bit larger. That right there is the nerd preferred way of uh, doing slide flooring. I don't like, I know that some people like a little bit of carpet because it helps keep the, uh, you know, the old tootsies warm and, and whatnot, but I like the easy cleaning function of this. And on that note, you'll also see one of the owner feedback things that Alliance adopted was uh, basically no floor vents except where just absolutely mandatory necessary. Sometimes when they're routing heat lines from the engineering perspective, there's just only so much room that can actually go into this. Now, um, if you're noticing right here, you've got the uh, No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place right here with this theater seat straight across from the TV. Okay, so one of the other things, though, is you kind of want to know, how, you know, how do I fit in this thing? So again, I had some assistance today. I got Mr. Kyle. I got Mr. Corey over here showing us everything. Oh, now... Kyle, I, I don't want to be presumptuous, but I think Mr. Corey is demonstrating the optional cuddle compliance on the theater seat over there, although it does also look like he initially shut it down. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, if you two fellas want to get close, that theater seat's going to be one where, you know, you're capable of doing it. Now, um, he puts it right back down. <laughs> Now, there's a very different thing going on with the air conditioning system in these. Uh, one of the cool things in every single paradigm is they are standard with a third air conditioner. Um, this has, I believe, a 40,500 BTU total air system. That's extremely powerful. And I'm tripping over Mr. Kyle's shoes over here that he was kind enough to take off before he stomped on someone's furniture, which I thought was great. So what you're going to see is the bedroom and the bathroom air conditioner, those are ducted together because that's a small space. These are direct dump air conditioners. Now, I have heard mixed things. I've heard some people say that was the fastest cooling and quietest system I've ever heard. I've also heard some people say that was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. 
And I suspect the difference might be, are we on like quiet mode or like full power mode? That's my estimation. I don't know that for sure, but I have seen that the actual uh, Alliance owners are some of the very best about offering um, insight and assistance. So if you are an owner of one of these, if you have experience with that air system, could you do us all a favor and uh, you know share that around a little bit? In the meantime, we're going to start diving into all the storage galorage in here. And interestingly, we're going to begin the storage galorage uh, up here above the sofa, because this is something I think Alliance does very well. A lot of manufacturers have really started to neglect this area over the years. Like you see the extra shelving in there. They have the, uh, the doors have a nice symmetry about them. Everything opens up nicely. The one knock I'm gonna give them here though, is they do sacrifice a little bit of storage. Of course, these hidden hinges want to close themselves. Look at their soft close. Ooh, woo I like that. Anyway. They sacrificed a chunk of storage for this neat little aesthetic visual panel right here. It does look cool. I'm very much a function over fashion kind of guy, which is actually leading me directly to one of the only knocks that I personally have against this. That storage space above the TV is awesome. But that TV is on a fixed mount. It does not pivot. That's an easy thing for us to change out. That is a smart TV, by the way. So if Jeff Fox were really asked if it's smarter than a fifth grader, the answer is probably yes. But the, it's just wasted pocket storage behind the TV. Um, if someone is crafty, if they're industrious, I'm sure they could repurpose that. I really would like to see Alliance just do a little bit more with it. Like, if we're not going to do storage, maybe do a, a power televator there. And if you're not going to do that, make it a, a pivoting TV so that when I am sitting here over on the sofa, which, by the way, when, when Kyle was laying out here earlier, this is kind of what he would have seen. He still has a nice direct view of things. I don't think it's bad by any stretch. I just feel like it could be a little bit better. Um, that big old uh, Insignia 4-burner stove here, because again, when you're in something like this, we're past camping. We're in glamping. You know, we're in the full-time living sort of situation right here. That's That that uh, that big stove for real cooking's nice. But sometimes it's what you don't see. Do you see a big step up for the kitchen? And of course you don't, because the sticker right there spoiled the surprise. Alliance was really one of the very first manufacturers to crack the code on a flush floor kitchen slide system that is now becoming more common in the RV industry because Alliance has driven that forward. Uh, it's almost a shame they didn't like copyright or patent that or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's not copyright, it's patent. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Patent, wasn't, wasn't he one of the guys at the Battle of Midway? I don't know. Convection microwave oven over here. You see easy reach outlets all over the place. You know, just really smart kitchen symmetry. Right here, we're looking at the gas electric two-way fridge. You do have a, uh, a residential fridge option, which is funny because the residential refrigerator is by far the more common choice people have at Alliance Paradigm RVs. But um, the, the couple that I've covered have always had the gas electric two-way in them. And of course, you do have that rain-sensing max air vent fan. What you also have in this RV is a uh, husband had an idea timeout seat that Mr. Kyle's, he's even looking all sad. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the sad puppy face. And then over here, you got Mr. Corey with long legs like mine, but he can sit here comfortably for a couple of reasons. One, this is a no knee knocker dinette. Corey apparently has some serious sock game. Is Are those Stormtrooper and Darth Vader socks? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I, I, need, uh, I need a set of those. You need to send me the link. Anyway, uh, maybe you can find the Amazon link to Corey's socks in the video description, I don't know. But my point is, you have two full-time chairs, you have two fold-away chairs, and it brackets against the wall, so you're not constantly bashing up your knee. Oh, you know what else I forgot? Handy coat closet right by the door over here. Oh, look at this, thank you, Vanna. Um... <laughs> trying so hard not to laugh and then up top here i'm gonna just call this hats and gloves and yeah that's up really high where you might need a step stool to get to it but at least they didn't waste the space that is something that just irks me constantly now the island is asymmetrical and i for one am a fan because the sink, this big farm sink is all the way off to one side. By the way, that's th this is another one of my preferences. The one-piece dish drying rack instead of the two-piece. Um, <laughs> the two-piece and a biscuit dish drying rack that a lot of brands do. It's all just one thing. You can still fold it over if you want to. Wide open space down below here. Big enough to make Texas jealous. And a uh, great spot for a big wastebasket. But then you see just three massive drawers over here. 
One of the cool things is every now and then in one of these Alliance RVs, you see this little sticker that says Ready Connect. That space right there, if you wanted to remove those drawers, you could, because that is prepped for a little RV dishwasher. And it was kind of interesting to me, like what defines different classes? And somebody said the other day, if it's not prepped for a dishwasher, it is not a, uh, a luxury RV. Now, because we have a front master bathroom and we have a middle bedroom, a lot of people are like, I don't want strangers walking through my bedroom where my personal possessions and this is a very personal private space, you know. I don't want people going through that thing. Well, the good news on this is you don't have to. Oh, God, I'm, so I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So I just, you, why do you, why is it open? Why is the lid open? That's well, weird. That way I can show you this. Soft Are you kidding me? Now that's cool. And I tell you what, you know why I like that? Because uh, I, I am a late night klutz and I have a good way of banging stuff around. So we have soft clothes, doors, drawers. Look at that. What else you want to show me in here? Got a mirror? Got a mirror. Okay. Look at that. The whole wall? Look at how good that mirror looks with your face in it though. I make that mirror look good. <laughs> he makes that mirror look good. <laughs> but look at this here. You've got the same um, like solid surface uh, countertop in here in the half bath you have in everything else. Uh, Mr. Corey, while you're in here, could you open that storage up for us a little bit? Look at that nice little wastebasket space. Drawers to the floors. Not an ounce of space gone to waste. Hold on just a second. One last thing. There we go. Now, something else you're probably seeing, but like I do want to consciously acknowledge all of the awesome accent lighting here. Like that cool, almost like diesel pusher ceiling light fixture that we have up there. That's all LED inlaid. And you've got crown molding accent lighting up top, which can uh, allow for a very cool thing I call stealth mode camping. And that's where you turn off all of the main ceiling lights. And it just, it brings everything down inside here to a soft glow. Kind of like there's a uh, countertop accent lighting here. It's enough to let you navigate the RV without being so bright that it's like, you know, blinding you by any stretch. By the way, if you appreciate the assistance uh, of our friends Corey and Kyle today, uh, leave me a little comment. Uh, I'm trying something new. I'm trying something different. Uh, you know, I'm meeting all kinds of fun new people and I just said, hey, you want to get in on this? And they said, well, heck yeah. And you know, I want to, I wanted to encourage that. Um, if you'd like to continue meeting more of our team members at our different stores as I travel around, well, let me know. Big old giant sliding barn door hardware right there to close off the master bath from the uh, the master bedroom. And you have your choice between a king or a queen bed. I do suspect the vast majority of people are going to go with the, uh, the king option, though. One of the reasons I wanted to slowly weave you uh, around the uh, corner here, though, is to take a look at that extra little pocket. It's not much, it's just an extra little thing. But again, not an ounce of space gone to waste. Uh, all of the windows, by the way, have had those blackout roller shades. And this, I don't know, is really a very CPAP friendly floor plan. I do like these side stands. If you put a little stand on the side here for a CPAP machine, the outlets are obviously very easy to reach, but then you're really kind of limiting your ability to crawl into the bed. Now, they got a padded headboard uh, up there for big, you know, klutzy clod hoppers like me. There's also storage below this bed. And, uh, you know, if only there was a way that we could, uh, you know, lift this bed up and show you all the space below it. And here he is, once again, Mr. <laughs> This guy's on the spot, man. All right, lift that sucker up. Let's see what's down here. This would be a great place to store your uh, fold-away dining chairs. This is also apparently a great place to store this guy. He is not happy about this one. These guys were literally, they said, okay, we're going to take turns. on." Yeah, yeah, close that down, shut that down, and sit on it so he can't get out. Um... <laughs> But this is a uh, this is a a really cool thing right here where you know if you could put your fold away guest chairs down there or just some things that you don't use uh, every single day and I am wondering is that storage? There is. There is. They didn't have to do that. That you know what? If that would have just been paneled off, I never would have thought twice about it. I'd have been like, all right, it's a small pocket, no big deal. They just they utilize it, and this is also nice because remember that bathroom slide that vanity that sink all the way up through all of this dresser drawerage galorage over here that is all one upper deck super slide plus the bed has a slide so that's the thing when you're looking at this one this is going to be probably a little bit heavier and a little bit more expensive as compared to a bunch of other front bathroom models you find out there 
it has a full additional slide. Most of those uh, do not. And a lot of your big luxury kind of fifth wheels are starting to adopt that nice little uh, jewelry, personal effect kind of storage. Easy place to keep your remote control, obviously, for the, uh, this is also a smart TV, which is kind of cool. And then we, uh, you know, pass through the bathroom gate. We bring ourselves over here uh, to yet another epoxy poured countertop. That solid surface kind of countertop in here where it's seamless, it glitters, it looks shiny. It just looks absolutely fantastic. And I want to give them serious, serious credit. I am not personally a fan of twin sink bathrooms in almost any RV floor plan. They very rarely make sense. I love the fact that they gave us the dual windows, they gave us the dual outlets, and they just gave us awesome countertop space with extra storage below. Look at that, though. Every little nook and cranny they possibly could. Something else I like. We're going to see this kind of repeated outside. Easy access to things like different valves and whatnot. So if you need to get in here to some of these uh, like water lines, they're giving you easy service panels to get into those things, which I think is cool. This is nice. Nice little towel storage built right in over here. And also, once again, uh, the big XL vent fan. It has been driving me nuts how many of these big, allegedly fancy uh, fifth wheels have nothing but a four-inch fart fan in their bathrooms. And this is a, a, a Taco Tuesday depository where sometimes you just need that superior airflow. Now, thanks to the magic of mirrors, you're getting to see that there's a lot of people going on in this bathroom space over here. Once again, we've got, he had no idea he was in the mirror the whole time. So um, this has a flip up down 300 pound rated teak seat. So if you're a bigger fella, a bigger lady, it's going to handle pretty well. Not to mention, this is another way that you get to see the size of a person in here. You know, because I'm, I'm tall, like, uh, like this fellow over here, like Mr. Corey, but I'm not very broad. So I thought that would be handy. He's going to hose him. Don't do it. Don't hose him down. Don't. It's going to be an HR nightmare. That would have been, yeah, in a freeze in the eye. How did that happen? I don't know. But it is six and a half foot tall in this upper deck. So even with the cool brim on that cool hat, there's plenty of headroom in this thing. And like he's pointing out, the little shower shelf over here, a place where you can actually set some shampoo or some body wash and whatnot, the little soap caddy on this, and that is height adjustable shower hardware. So uh, let's say there's two people in this shower and you need a, uh, uh, you know, a little uh, extra headroom for one and less for the other, you know, you can make that happen. Now, the only thing that feels kind of weird to me is when I am in here on the toilet, it just kind of feels like I'm sort of in the middle of the room. But what I like is how the toilet is not visible, like directly as you're looking down the RV. To me, that's just, I don't know. It's just a nice thing visually. But as we saw earlier, this thing has a full-on walk-in closet. And <laughs> sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> but on a serious note, I kind of feel like I need to ding them a little bit here. Like I noticed this just doesn't, want to stay shut and for for no for... josh no what there's a latch right here my guy oh See? This <laughs> latch right here. oh well yeah, well, then that makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Okay. Well, hey, see, that's why, you know, I, I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Sometimes you just need the words of a professional to kind of clarify things. Now, uh, getting back over here around the corner, one of the other nice things about this one is that uh, it maintains some excellent storage even if you do install either a combo or a stackable washer dryer in this thing, which I think is kind of nice. And the, the way that they utilize like that, that, they have a very bulbous kind of front nose cap. It just really sticks out quite a bit right there. But they build the storage out into it. Like, look at how big and deep this is over here. And where do you put yesterday's clothes? Well, in this one, you can put them in a plywood laundry hamper. And frankly, this is a, I mean, a legit walk in closet up here that uh, just not a lot of RVs can boast and, and match. Now, as far as travel accessibility goes for a big floor plan like this, I think they did as good as they possibly could have. One of the other things that this really revealed to me, which is something I have a personal history really, uh, you know, looking at is can I get the refrigerator out if I need service, whether it's the 18 cubic foot residential or gas electric that we're looking at, the answer is yes. And you can do it without knocking a window out of the RV or removing a slide out. 
It can be dismounted, it can be fully accessed in transit, and you can easily take it out the front door if need be. Now, you might need to pop the doors off, but that's not exactly difficult. Now, the front bathroom, I don't really think you're going to be getting into that thing, uh, you know, when you're uh, going down the road, unless you're willing to climb over the bed. The good news is that for a quick bathroom stop, I don't know that you really need to. And again, fresh in, off the plane from his uh, Fashion Week in Paris trip here, we have Mr. Corey. Corey told me one of the things he likes most about these is the exceptionally large pass-through storage compartment. Um, being both uh, drop frame as well as wide body, this opens up to a, uh, a huge size. And look at this sweet little cherub that we have down here. Look, wow, he's like, he's like voguing for us uh, <laughs> over here. But uh, I caught him at a little bit more of a compromising situation over here. Yeah, I teleport. You like that? David, that's not editing. That's David Blaine teleporting right there. So you see the full enclosed protected docking center. Um, these are absolutely what you're looking for out of a big fifth wheel. The, the hot, cold, camp, tested, rated. But one of the other user input features that they included on these, you see this little pull strap. Look at him trying to sneak away. Um, that is basically an easy access panel to things like our, uh, like, well, the, the backside of that docking center where if you need to get to something for winterization or anything like that, they give you an easy access place to do it. We're going to get up close and personal to the suspension system in just a second. Um, this is one of those things, by the way, after you look at RVs for a long time, you learn to identify them, the floor plan. Like when you see uh, a, a big empty front nose wall and then a slide in the middle, that's a front bath every single time. You got the, the Kurt Rotoflex uh, shock dampening pin box up here, taking the herky jerkiness out of a lot of towing. Um, and you'll find a very, very like similar matching suspension system to go with that. Now up front here, obviously we just have a big wide open storage cavity, which is great if you're looking for max storage. Uh, back here though, you see that we also have these little perforated punch outs. Well, that is in case you want to uh, go with the optional gen prep and or generator. Now slides, leveling, that's all hydraulic. And one of the things I wanna give him credit for, like you see a whole lot of stuff over here real quick. But if you look, it's all kind of very cleanly managed. It's all bundled up nicely. A lot of manufacturers just have this random a scraggle of wires, which is a technical term, by the way. Uh, and that auto leveling is six point hydraulic, which means it moves fast and it is extremely stable at your campsite. Look at the patio awnings on this though. That is one of the things I'm really curious. What do you think about this? Because you do have that door side slide. Um, hey, uh, Corey, Kyle, could you guys come stand under that slide? Let people see like, are you gonna bump your heads on it? This is kind of nice having some people. So as we're seeing here, it sort of depends a little bit on your uh, exact size and stature. What I'm wondering is I'm a little bit taller. Can I stand under that thing? Well, I don't know, but I do my own stunts. I'm willing to find out. Uh Nope. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what the Bish's concussion protocols are. I'll look that up later when I can see out of my left eye again. But um, that awning is kind of over the top of that admittedly shallow slide. Personally, I think we're still going to have plenty of space there. Actually, could you do us a favor? Could you hop inside and open those awnings up? Let's see if we can get some of that kind of action while we have some. <laughs> wow, look, he is, he's light on his feet. Look at this guy. That is an anti-slam door, so if he does happen to fling it, it ain't going to bang against the side of everything. And once again, we have those gigantic door side windows over here, letting you enjoy the look at your campsite instead of the neighbor's site. Now, as we're starting to see, that front awning is opening up here. And I personally suspect what we're going to find is that this has a great deal of functional patio space still available to it. In the meantime, though, on the back side here, well, actually on the underside, let's get, let's get to the bottom of things. And what we learn is that it is very difficult to mow under an RV that's over the top of grass. <laughs> well, you see the, the handy sewer hose caddy. What may not be as obvious is that it's a full length, it's a full width caddy, so a longer tube can fit in there and it's a, a a larger diameter tube so your bayonet fittings can actually remain on this thing oh and look at this noise right here so um a lot of rvs with like this a big rv that might stay uh at a like a semi-permanent site for a long time water washes down the slide walls when it's raining then it tries to get into the subfloor they basically put a protective flange right here to keep that water from getting into and rotting and causing soft spots. That is a really cool long-term longevity thing. Now, if you notice, our friends were kind enough to get all this open for us here. I'm telling you, these guys are gonna spoil me out here. They, uh, 
they're they're just willing to jump on everything out here in Oregon for us. The uh, total awning coverage on this though is absolutely excellent, and I want to give you a couple different angles on it because I don't always get a chance to do this, and as long as I have all this space, we're gonna exploit it. <laughs> like like Chinese child labor, we're gonna exploit these awnings. <laughs> Oh, uh, hey, don't call HR on me, all right? I can't even spell that. Nobody's going to see this anyway. No one watches these videos. So what do you guys think? Is that functional awning space or is that wasted awning space? You know, and I don't know that there's a wrong answer. It might vary from person to person. I just kind of like to put it out there. And some of my personal ones, but I like when the speakers aren't too darn high. That's about as high as I would like them. Um, I get why they're not a whole lot lower. I personally really like them mounted in the skirting of an RV. That way we're not blowing the neighbors away with our Freedom Rock or, uh, wait, till, wait till the end of this video. We have a special guest with a musical talent that you're really going to enjoy. Now off the backside here, despite the fact that this thing is long, they still outfit it with a 3,000 pound towing hitch. Now, here's a funny little bit of trivia. You guys know, the only difference between a towing hitch and an accessory hitch is whether they call it a towing hitch or an accessory hitch. It's physically the exact same hitch, but because they put the safety chain hooks on it, because they put the four-way wiring harness on it, that one is actually set and uh, rated for, um, uh, you know, pulling something behind it. But keep in mind, this is a long RV. You need to make sure uh, if you're going to do some doubles towing, that local state guidelines or sometimes even local county guidelines are, uh, you know, they allow you to do that. But it does have a good look about it, doesn't it? Dang almighty. All right. Now, one of the other things I really like about this, I was wondering, since you have a full bathroom in the front, but then you have a bedroom in between the bathroom and the kitchen, how many sewer outlets are we going to have? And thankfully on this one, we have but a single sewer <laughs> but a single sewer outlet ha <laughs> all right now up top here we got the one two three count up coleman quiet q series air conditioners uh again triple air standard on every single paradigm uh that is i'm pretty sure the proper way of saying it there's somebody on the ground saying Par i know buddy paradigm that's what i do uh <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys down here, they're like, oh, th this idiot from the Midwest, he doesn't even know how to say paradigm. What, they don't teach him books over there? I don't know. They don't teach me no book learning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I was getting at. So your triple air conditioner standard on every single paradigm, as as our friends downstairs are uh, want to make sure I get it correctly. You got the max air roof vent cover, keeps that airflow going even on the rainy days. And we're seeing the standard situation up top here with just the roof solar prep. Now that does allow for, especially with a big rig like this, there's just about an acre of open roof space here where if we wanted to add panels galore, we could go nuts on this thing. But you do have the option of uh, getting a 190 watt roof solar panel package. One of the cool things with that though, is that comes with a 2000 watt inverter, which significantly enhances the kind of potential functionality you could get out of that. Runs to um, several outlets on the RV. I will try to remember to list those on screen, but uh, my memory is not as good as a, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? I forgot. So everybody, a uh, big old thank you to Corey and Kyle today for jumping in and helping us out. Uh, if you'd like to uh, learn a little bit more about one of these uh, Alliance Paradigms, as uh, they don't like me saying, uh, make sure you give these fellows over here a call. Uh, we do have Alliance at other locations as well, so check the link in the video description as I cover up uh, Mr. Corey's face. Now, I, I'm also told we have somebody here with a special talent. Mr. Corey, can you beatbox for us? Oh. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot like that. You're on the spot. You're on the spot, You're on the spot dude. man. Uh, but you got to dance then. All right. All right. Dance All then. right. Here we go. Here we go. How about? Oh! Woo! Yes! Yes! That's what we do here at Bish's RV. We beatbox, we dance, and we have fun. When you're ready to have a good time, you give us a call. We're going to have a blast. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy beatbox dancing, everyone.